Now, according to Klein, um, the first year of life was split into two phases. Um, the first half was the paranoid schizoid phase. Um, position is the word she used, but it's, think of it like a phase. And the second was the depressive uh, position. Uh, very important um, for object relations, and I'll sh uh, you'll see why. So, um, according to her, these positions were important developmental functions of the ego. And uh, infants normally experience them during the oral and oedipal stage. So now, again, don't get confused here. Um, Freud's oedipal stage came much later. Uh, it came around the age of three. And the oral phase was in the first year of life. But to Klein, it was the, she felt that the oral and the oedipal stage was one and the same. So it's not that the oral and oedipal stage came at two separate points in the infant's life. She felt that the oral and oedipal stage started in infancy in the first year of life. Like I said, she disagreed with Freud on this. She felt that it started from the moment of birth. The oral and the oedipal complex started immediately. So that obsession with the mother started immediately. And um, she, she basically felt that that first year of life was the basic object forming, object relation forming year of life. And, and these two paranoid schizoid and depressive phases happened in the first year of life. Like I said, uh, you have to remember that Freud said that the oral stage came in the first year and the Oedipal stage came much later. But Klein felt the other way. She disagreed with him and she felt that both occurred together around infancy. So these changes, these two phases of paranoid schizoid and depressive happened in the first year of life. First half of the first year, um, first quarter, she said. So let's say, even if we say first half, we divide it into two phases. It's about zero to six months uh, of the first year of life. That's the paranoid schizoid phase, the paranoid schizoid position that occurred in the first quarter in the first year of life. This is where splitting is very important. Uh, now you'll see how um, this is the paranoid schizoid position in the first first um, phase for zero to four months or zero to five months approximately of the first year of life. Um, what she meant by pathological fragmentation is exactly what it means like splitting. So your your parts of yourself are fragmented. You you only see yourself as good bad. The mother is seen as only good bad. The mother's breast is only seen as good bad. This is normal splitting, according to Melanie Klein. The depressive position we'll come to later. It is basically, I'll explain how it is the fear of the loss of the object or the experience of the loss of the object. But right now, what you need to remember is these are the two positions. The first position is uh, paranoid schizoid, which is uh, basically fragmentation and splitting. The second position is basically fear of loss of the object. Again, object here, mother. So fear of the loss of the mother experience of the loss of the mother. That is the depressive phase. So how does splitting happen and why is splitting important in the paranoid schizoid position? So you have to imagine that the first six months of life, um, infants are not really aware of much. Uh, their eyesight is quite weak. Their hearing is not, not very strong. Um, the only senses which are really functioning well are smell and tactile, so touch um, and also oral. Um, so a lot of the senses or the sensations uh, of an infant are surrounding the mouth. And the reason for this is because, like I said, in the first six months of life, uh, the most important thing for any infant, especially if you think about evolutionary perspective, um, with the amount of infections and the amount of predators and the amount of, uh, you know, dangers to an infant, the only, the first six months is only for survival. And um, in the olden days, when there was no medicines, there was no antibiotics, infants would often catch infections in the first six months and die. So um, the first six months of an infant's life is basically all just about surviving. Just feed, sleep, feed, sleep, survive. Just live through these six months. So a lot of infant behavior in the first six months is driven towards survival. Hence, you see a lot of feeding behavior, a lot of rooting for the breast, wanting to stay close to the mother. Uh, now, what happens in the paranoid schizoid position is... Um, and this is how splitting happens, uh, is the infant starts to develop hunger. He's hungry. He's, he's very, very hungry. And he's got a strong drive to feed himself. And he's looking. He's, he's wanting. He wakes up from a nap and he's looking for the breast. He's looking for the mother. He's looking for immediate uh, satiation of the hunger. 
now if the breast at that time is offered and the mother is responsive now this is where attachment theory also comes into play um if the mother is responsive to the infant's cues and she offers the breast immediately it is perceived as the good breast however if the breast doesn't appear now the infant's getting really frustrated and angry and he's woken up from his sleep and he's crying and he's frustrated and he's feeling alone and he's feeling cold and he's hungry all the negative emotions all the negative drives that are a threat to its survival are now activated so he's feeling a real threat to his survival mother is nowhere to be seen so now what happens is he starts perceiving the breast as a bad breast and a typical example of this um, it's my personal opinion but i've also seen this and also heard about this from a lot of mothers is i have sometimes uh, seen in, in my own children and even even when many mothers have um, complained to me about how um, in the first 6 months of life when they are breastfeeding their children um, the te- newborns tend to reject the breast especially if the mother waits too long to offer a feed and this was a phenomenon that i don't didn't really um, connect with object relations till i had my own children and by that time i was already a psychologist so um, i knew i instantly saw what client meant when she said that there is this total anger and frustration against the bad breast and you know now the infant so hungry but but he's just he's so angry with you for not responding to him on time and hence there is this total rejection there is this total frustration against uh, the breast which is now completely you know he 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 hates it and um, this was a phenomenon that that really it struck me the first time um, i saw mothers with infants and i and i understood what client meant when she said that you know the infant only perceives the mother as far as her breast is concerned in the first 6 months he doesn't know that she's a whole human being it's only depending on whether the hunger need is met or not and in this case um, like i said uh, try not to think of it as a biological thing like freud that it was only about the hunger but also about the comfort also about the emotion also about i need my mother right now um, but she's not coming you know so this is where attachment theory said that if you have a mother who is not responsive to your cues who is not responsive to you as a baby you will develop insecure attachment so it's all about the mother's response even in object relations even in attachment um and then klein also went further to hypothesize that infants had a fantasy to destroy the bad breast thus acting out aggressive fantasies of their mind if you think about very relevant um and this will also be quite relevant for your assignment um uh, if you think about the amount of men who commit crimes against women uh and the amount of aggression against men and women especially in, in indian society this would very well explain where that aggressive fantasy of the mind comes from um it could originally in klein's world be an aggressive fantasy against the mother which is actually being acted out against a strange woman and um it's a very very fascinating thing if you think about it that maybe mothers in especially in indian society because of um, you know lack of help or lack of support or maybe uh, poverty not being able to attend to children on time not being able to be responsive to children lack of education um, you know lack of men- medical support they could be not as responsive and hence these aggressive fantasies develop in the infant against the mother um so in the paranoid schizoid position like i said they can only be good or bad even in the infant's own ego so now what happens is now he's perceived the breast as either good or bad and um and um he introjects he identifies that part of the mother with his own self and he starts to see himself as either good or bad so this is the paranoid schizoid position now the infant is in the paranoid schizoid position after 6 months comes the depressive position which is the second quarter of the first year of life and this position according to klein remains throughout life and uh, you continue to mature throughout this position in your entire life so what happens now is that after 6 months um, let's if you see biologically um, infant is able to move around is able to you know interact with people smiling starts cooing starts babbling starts other people start to come into the infant's vision so um, their vision becomes clearer their sound hearing becomes clearer and they are able to um, engage in you know play with other people not just the mother and um, 
the infant is now starting to become a whole personality and he's able to perceive the mother and also the self as a whole object not just a good and bad object but somebody who's just a whole of many different many different parts and pieces and um, he starts to see the mother as someone who is human and is able to make mistakes she is not just bad uh, when she's bad and good when she's good she's she's both and she's able to um, she's able to provide gratification she's able to pro provide comfort but she's also able to frustrate the infant she's also able to let the infant down disappoint the infant but the infant doesn't hold that against her he or she understands that the mother is a whole human being and she is able to um provide what she needs to provide but also at the same time that there, there may be times she is not able to provide and um the infant starts to see that the mother is a human who has shortcomings and it doesn't mean that she's only bad so now what happens in this depressive position is that the perception of the wholeness starts to begin the infant is able to internalize the mother's memory as a whole and they start to develop a tolerance for separation from the mother now while the separation tolerance from the mother is developing you remember if we saw that slide with the with the depressive position as the fear of the loss of object and experience of the loss of the object now in the depressive position it's very important to remember is separation starts to happen physically from the mother the baby starts to crawl maybe even a little bit of walking starts to happen um lack of uh, so breastfeeding starts to uh, slow down and more solids are introduced so the baby is able to stay away from the mother a lot of mothers return to work by this time so there is this physical aspect of it separation so what happens is that for the first time the infant tolerates the separation from the mother but the uh, there's also fear that they will lose the mother there is the experience of losing the mother because the mother is not around all the time and this can lead to very uh, Uh, anxious and um, you know uh, frustrating um, feelings in the infant in the beginning, and uh, it's very important that in this depressive position, parents and especially mother has to be very very understanding. The infant may act out aggressively, angrily if the mother is gone for long periods of time, but re reassurance and a lot of love and a lot of tolerance from the mother's side will eventually um, you know. lead to the comfort that the infant needs that the mother's there she's not gone and um with this comes a sense of um otherness so that the infant starts to understand that i'm not just me and my survival is not the only important thing there are others around me i feel for them you really start to see a concern for others um develops and um, now you're not just talking about then 6 months but this like i said this this maturity continues throughout life like line said now what happens to people who do not successfully develop through the depressive position um they are not able to develop fully as individuals and i'll i'll tell you how so their inner and outer worlds don't synchronize causing a lot of problematic behavior um even in the schizoid position the first paranoid schizoid position so what kleinians um, as they call themselves uh, psychoanalysts who follow klein said was that um, you know they believed that for example in the depressive position when the separation starts to happen from the mother there is a lot of anxiety there is a lot of depression there is a lot of um, you know frustration if the mother and father's response is one of love one of care one of reassurance then the person is able to develop even further in the depressive position and become a whole human being now if that doesn't happen adequately that person may not synchronize um, you know the inner world meaning that they, like i said they are not able to self soothe and they are also not able to accept the separation this would then eventually lead to many other problems like for example depression number 1 that there is no ability to self soothe there is no ability to tolerate separation from a significant other in this case mother later on it can be an adult romantic partner um these lead to anxieties so this was basically what klein believed that this lack of maturity could lead to these further problems now what happens in paranoid schizoid position if you have a person who stuck in the paranoid schizoid position and doesn't mature through the paranoid schizoid position now we don't know why because klein never said that in her theories that why she felt they would be stuck but i'm guessing most probably lack of response from the mother 
um, lack of a good environment, nurturing environment, lack of adequate um, breast milk, um, you know, maybe she, mother is in an abusive family. There could be many reasons. But if, if the mother is not responsive enough and the child is stuck in the paranoid schizoid position, then you see somebody who is either good or bad. You see that splitting and you see that splitting even in the adult. They are not able to empathize with somebody, somebody else. So if, if they are in an adult romantic relationship, they will view their partner as only either very good or very bad. This is very common in personality disorders. People who have personality disorders are always seeing the world as black and white. There is no gray area for them. They do not have the ability or the empathy to understand that the opposite person is also struggling with his or her own baggage and may not be always available for you. That doesn't make that person a bad person. It just means that you need to understand that everybody has their own struggles. People with personality disorders are not able to empathize. They're not able to see the opposite person as a whole human being with their own struggles. They only see that, oh, did this person respond to me? Yes, then this person is a good person. Did this person not respond to me? Then this person is a bad person. This is very common with especially borderline personality. And um, um, what Klein felt was that somebody who was stuck in the paranoid schizoid position would, would view the world as, as, as either being good to me or bad to me. There is no gray area. There is no, you know, nobody needs to be good or bad or anything to me. People are just people, you know, and um, they are not able to see that. And um, this was also in Klein's opinion, a uh, reason for schizophrenia, which is a very well-known uh, mental disorder. And um, paranoia, paranoia, uh, pa you have, um, you know, uh, generalized anxiety disorder or antisocial personality disorder. So these sort of schizoid disorders, according to Klein, uh, came because the person was still stuck in that um, splitting and was not able to mature and see the world and see people as a whole. Mm -hmm.